Welcome to session three of I Choose Peace. You know, we're talking about how do you choose peace under all the demands and confusion and data in everyday life. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dave and I are here and we're excited to be with you today. <laughs> Dave, you know, there's something that happens in a group that's great, but these are called life groups. Mm -hmm. And so life isn't just in this group. Uh, in, in light of this passage especially, what are some yeah. things that we could do outside the group that would really help us experience God's peace so we have more to bring to the group? Yeah. Uh, you know, in Romans 12, which is a great profile of a disciple, yeah. somebody wrote a book on that. Uh, it talks about in verse two, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed mm -hmm. by the renewing of your mind. So how do we renew our minds so that we're not conformed to this world? Well, the number way of renewing your mind is through God's word. Amen. And uh, I had the blessing of growing up in a family where uh, my dad encouraged me to read a chapter from the Bible every day. Wow. And even though I wandered from God for a while through high school and into college, that was a foundation in my life. And when I came back to Christ, that a lot of those scriptures came back and I got right back into the routine of studying, reading the word every day. And it's, it's been an anchor in my life Same. for 30 plus years now wow. of walking with God. And so my encouragement is begin a habit if you don't have it already. I know many of you are already committed to reading the word regularly, but if it's not a part Same. of your life, Start, yeah. start little. Yeah. Uh, we have a Bible reading plan. If you download the Venture app, there's a link there to mm -hmm. our Bible reading plan, or you can go to the website and find it. And a chapter a day, it's mm -hmm. achievable. Uh, it's something that will over time really transform your mind and uh, the way that you think about life. It really does. And in community, in life, when you get together for your group, yeah. you can encourage one another in that. In fact, let me just, finish with a verse, Romans 10, 17 says, faith mm. comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If you want your faith to grow, get into the word and it'll Amen. transform your life. So let's jump in and see what our scripture has today. Amen. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. Welcome to session three on I Choose Peace. And we're looking again at, you just read those two verses, and they're powerful. This may be uh, the most life-changing truth, at least in my personal life, I ever experienced. It's, you know, one thing to have peace when things are well, uh, finances are good, relationships are good, you're in a calm situation, circumstances are going well, but, but how do you choose peace in just the normal everyday demands of life? You get up early, you go to bed late, you take the kids here, you're in traffic, your supervisor is unreasonable today, someone blows up on you over here, man, there's demands everywhere. I mean, we're in the Silicon Valley. This is a place of pressure, pressure, pressure. And then every time, every time y y your mind is just like, your phone is dinging and your iPad's here and your computer's over here and someone slacks you over here and then there's Facebook over here and Instagram over here and then have you caught the news and what about this blog? And I mean, we are inundated with information and people and pressure and traffic and demands and responsibilities, and then you add some of those worries that we kind of have not figured out how to resolve, a problem relationship here or there, and to have peace in the midst of all of that may be one of the greatest testimonies we could ever have in the world. And in verses eight and nine, the Apostle Paul teaches us how, and he basically says, you are what you eat. I mean, literally, we, we know that physically. I remember, uh, watching a documentary of uh, a guy that did this deal where he was gonna only eat fast food. I won't mention any names. It was like only eat fast food every day for like 30 or 60 days. And he actually, he, they had to take him to the hospital. I mean, everything got so clogged up. And, but it's true intellectually and emotionally as well. Whoever you are right now is the product of your thought life. 
Uh, I shared in the message that little illustration that was done at the University of Tennessee. I mean, it was like, what, five minutes of bad news, the impact that it had on people. Remember that? I mean, it was like just five minutes of bad news every single day over a period of time versus a control group that didn't have any bad news. And people began to believe that uh, life was really unfair. They were less likely to help people. Um, what you allow to go into your mind is the most important thing, the most important decision you ever make. And so he says to us, here's the command, dwell on these things. And so it's in your notes, but on what is true, what's objectively true, on, on, on what is just, are you thinking of things that are right, uh, on things that are, that are pure, are, they're holy, they're wholesome, uh, things that are um, lovely, attractive, beautiful, things that are admirable, things that are praiseworthy. And in the message, I, I gave you sort of a, a test of, it, should I put this in my mind or not? And here's what I know. Primetime TV, Netflix, YouTube, articles, pornography, um, the evening news, uh, violence in video games. We are so desensitized. And what I want you to know is the great amount of lack of peace that many of us experience it literally is a cause and effect. Now, we wouldn't be shocked, you know, if I sat down and ate three box of chocolates, if I felt lousy later, but somehow I sit and watch maybe either on the net or on my TV, 45 minutes of this person was killed, this person was killed, there may be a nuke coming our way, there was a riot over here, uh, this person in India. I mean, all this information, let alone what happens to you, those things get programmed into your brain and your emotions begin to respond. And he says, you can change that. Remember the word dwell. I, I actually write the definition on this card. To dwell is to think on, not casually, but to reckon, to deduct, to reason, to calculate, to ponder, to deliberate, protracted analysis. It's, it's why for me, and I know it's a discipline, and you know, I hear the other pastors share about this, I get into God's Word every day, not legalistically. I, I get into God's Word because I need to reorient my mind. And what I know is as I've made that habit of putting good things in my mind, I, I've, I've made some personal decisions that I've shared earlier about what movies I'll watch, what level of violence I'll let into my mind. Not just because I'm you know, a pastor. What I know is those things, what I dwell on, are going to come out in my life, my desires. And so dwelling on those things that where you put good music and, and, and powerful images and beauty and walks in nature and being around positive people, those things really change how you live. But the second half, he says, it's beyond that. It's habitually practice these things. And so what I want to ask you is in your own personal life, what is your mental diet? What are you putting into your mind? And here's the promise. As we put positive, good, godly things into our mind, and as we practice habitually, and not perfectly, but habitually practice what God's showing us, and I can't do that, you can't do that, but that's why we're in this life group together. We encourage one another. I got a group of guys that I meet with on Sunday afternoon, and I mean, we're all in it and struggling and renewing our mind and sharing our struggles, but as we do that and practice it, it has blown my mind the change that I've seen in them and seen in me. And the promise is the God of peace, not just the peace of God, but the God of peace will be with you. You know, you can drive in traffic with the God of peace. You can go through a review with your employer with the God of peace. You can go through a tough time in your marriage with the God of peace. You can be single and joyful with the God of peace. Let me ask you this question. What are the ways right now that you feel like you're putting good things into your mind and how's it impacting you. And then at whatever level you're willing to share, I'd like you to go ahead and stretch a little bit. You know, this is our third time together. I'd like you to share um, what are some things that maybe they're not even quote evil, but they're just not very good that, that you feel like they're dragging you down. And how could you not put those in your mind? You ready? Let's share.